Saskia held on to the delicate lifeline of guilt. Guilt about the pleasure she was experiencing without her lover. Guilt about coming to the club. Guilt about taking the nectar. The nanobot nectar had been in her system for five hours, an hour longer than it was meant to be, and the toilet cubicle was starting to feel like a prison as she sat and waited for the release of excretion. It wouldn't come. Presumably, the bots had counteracted the huge dose of lax laxatives she'd swallowed. Attempting to puke had also proved pointless. The bots had controlled her gag reflex, preventing the relief of vomiting them into the clean white sink. Stupidly, she'd ignored the rumours of imperfect black market copies. So, there they sat in her stomach, connecting with other nearby bots to create their legendary upward spiral of pleasure by relaying emotion from the pit of one stomach to another. She was addicted, and the bots knew it. <coughs> they wouldn't let go. They knew she needed them. But she was in love and desperate to break her nectar addiction. There'd be no harm in one last time, or so she'd thought. She hadn't anticipated the corrupted bots or the guilt. This pleasure dragged up her deepest lusts, tugging on memories of past excesses, and yet it was wrong, disloyal to her lover. If only the bots were intelligent enough to understand the long-term harm they could do. But they weren't, and never would be. These particular bots would hang on for dear life, or whatever their existence was called. With a shrug, she pulled up her knickers and straightened her skirt. Back in the heady atmosphere of the club, she had to find a different way to trigger the end of this nectar session. Sex. She was surrounded by sex, not body-on-body -body sex, but a powerful, highly charged and sensational outpouring of erotic desire. The bots were doing a splendid job of amplifying pleasure by bouncing it from one person to another. Two men sat in the corner stroking each other's faces. The intensity of their desire radiated like a shockwave. Saskia felt her cheeks flush. There was something about these two that made them stand out from the crowd. Plenty of couples and groups were sitting around, touching and stroking, but these two were locked onto each other, exquisitely exclusive. Squatting on the floor next to them, she stared. They were perfect for her plan. Hoping to spark a hostile reaction to break the cycle of pleasure and prompt the bots to leave her body, she took the hand of the pretty one and kissed the tips of his fingers, one by one. His lover flinched, but he left his fingers near her mouth. Deep in her stomach, she could feel his interest rising. He held his lover's hand and touched her earlobe. Their pleasure fed the bots, which fed the pleasure, which fed the bots, which fed the pleasure. No, not this, please, not this. Why weren't they annoyed or disgusted? Why didn't they push her away? As the bot shot the threesome upwards, Saskia held on to the faint memory of her own lover, that tenuous thread of guilt, and with a concentrated effort broke the cycle. In her stomach, she felt that angry disappointment. The bots reacted quickly, minimising the connection with the couple and reconnecting her to the general sexual euphoria permeating the room. She needed to get rid of these damn things from inside her, and yet they were so hardwired to their purpose, she couldn't see how she'd ever escape. She noticed an empty glass under a sofa. When she'd been too young to buy nectar and had needed to escape the dismal sadness of her life, She'd learned a trick or two about dissociation. 
She broke the glass and dragged a jagged piece across the soft skin of her forearm. If she could create a temporary distraction from the cloying pleasure, maybe she could break the hold of the nectar. As the glass cut, she felt her emotions loosening as if she was beginning to float away. Maybe this was it. Maybe she'd found her release. But no, it was the guilt that was disappearing, the exact opposite of what she wanted. There must be another way. She desperately scanned the room. A dark presence hung around a door at the far end and she hurried towards it. The bots rebelled inside her stomach, churning around as they tried to find a connection with a stronger pull than the unhappiness she was heading towards. Despite the increasing turmoil in her stomach as, she, as the bots fought the rise of despondency, she kept walking towards the door. The desperation flowing from that one spot in the room was powerful. So powerful that it was destroying whatever pleasure the bots could find as she crossed the room, allowing the guilt of her evening's meanderings to get stronger. The tug of war got more and more unpleasant. She was in danger of a total breakdown, but she carried on. She had to break free. She was sure that this was the answer. A few feet away from the door, she paused. Her stomach felt as if it was on fire, but she took a deep breath, held the side of her head and strode purposefully through the doorway and into the next room. As soon as she entered the dark, oppressive hellhole, her stomach felt as if it was plummeting out of her body. All joy and wonder and desire vanished completely. The bots gave way. She shat herself. <laughs>